Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about Ardner Merkin Batch 3, the brand new release from this young distillery, and I am very excited to be able to have this on the shelf. Didn't expect to get an allocation, to be perfectly honest. Um, there is another release called the Paul Lanoir, which I believe is a champagne cask finish. Um, a lot of people after that that have been contacting me about it, I didn't actually get an allocation of that. So if you're watching this hoping that I might be talking about that, unfortunately, you're going to be a little bit let down. Uh, but I do have some of the Batch 3, which is fantastic stuff. Uh, but before I tell you what it tastes like, let me give you a bit of background information about the distillery itself. The Ardnamurkin Distillery is the most westerly distillery on the mainland of Scotland, sitting on a remote 50 square mile peninsula with a single track road being the only access in and out. The distillery itself was opened in 2014 and is owned by Adelphi Distillers. Jamie Walker founded Adelphi in 1993. His grandfather, Archibald, was previously an owner of the Loch Katrine Adelphi Distillery, which opened in 1826 on the banks of the River Clyde. The business was eventually purchased by Keith Falconer and Donald Houston in 2003, and it was in 2007 that the first steps were taken to open a brand new distillery, as demand for Scotch whisky began to indicate it would be harder to source casks independently. Ardner Merkham produces both peated and unpeated spirit, using natural colour and no chill filtration. The Ardner Merkin Batch 3 is a combination of 65% ex-bourbon barrels and 35% ex-sherry casks, with a 50-50 split between peated and unpeated spirit. It's the first release to use whisky produced in 2016, but there is also some spirit distilled in 2014 and 2015. There are 17,502 bottles available worldwide, all released at 46.8% ABV. So, let me give you an idea of what the whisky tastes like. First, however, I will let you have a look at the box. Uh, made with recycled paper, the distillery is very environmentally friendly, very forward thinking. So it's recycled paper, looks quite cool, uh, feels quite nice, it's got quite a nice texture to it as well, and, and lots of kind of information on there as well. Speaking of information, on the bottle itself, where's the bottle gone? Um, they use something called block bleh, blockchain technology. Um, when I can say it, it sounds quite impressive. Uh, blockchain technology, which I struggle to say, um, is essentially um, breaking down the entire process of the whiskey making procedure uh, into little chunks where you can essentially tag it um, and then you have information that you can then share and use and it is kind of like evidence of this is how this whiskey has been made at each individual part of the process. So there is a QR code on the back label uh, and if you scan that QR code into your phone, just use the camera if you've got an iPhone, it'll automatically pick up the link. Um, you'll be able to go through to a separate website which will show you all the details literally Literally day by day of how this whiskey was produced, what was used, the barley, everything like that, who was involved with it. Now, unfortunately, I've got this a little bit earlier and it doesn't go live until next week, otherwise I basically would be able to put it live for you and, and put it on the video. But trust me on this, it will have all the information that you need. So, on to the whiskey itself. So, uh, ex-bourbon, ex-sherry, more ex-bourbon than there is ex-sherry, peated and unpeated. I'm going to use a little bit of this because this is going towards a tasting later on this year, along with an unopened bottle of Torovec that I have. So it'll be Ardemirk and Torovec and others. Quite looking forward to that. Um, so I'm only putting a little bit in because this is actually supposed to be saved for all the other people that are going to enjoy it later on this year. So on the nose. Really nice, rich. Sherry element comes through more than the bourbon, but you do get a slight sort of vanilla creaminess on there. There's a really nice kind of sweet baked bread nose on there. And then you start to get a little bit of that peated element. So we start to get, there's a, a marine element. So it's a kind of marine smokiness. It's almost like a slightly barbecued fish, but it's quite distant. It's, it's not overpowering. It's really nicely balanced. It's quite sweet. It's quite mellow. There's a lot going on there but it's not particularly up front, but that's actually quite a good thing. But I, I can imagine a couple of people are probably gonna go, oh, there's not a lot to it. And there isn't really kind of up front bang in your face, you know, oh, this is what we're standing for. It's quite subdued, but I like it because of that, because you have to go digging a bit and actually you need to find those flavors, but what is there is really good. I really like the balance of this. There's a, there's a nice sweet etch, there's a lovely maltiness, there's a, there's a hint of sherry, there's the creaminess from the bourbon. 
There is a slight saltiness in there. Now the official tasting notes kind of go on about mussels and things. I'm not a big fan of mussels anyway, but I do get that slightly marine, slight salt, sea salt, sea air, touch of black pepper. It's a really, really interesting nose. Complex, but not particularly massive. And that's not a bad thing. Now on the palate, that marine element comes through a little bit more. There's a definite youthfulness there, but that sweet kind of like brown sugar pastries element envelops the saltiness that's there. There's a lovely texture to this. There's a really good weight on the spirit. It really coats the mouth. It's slightly oily. There is, reminds me a little bit of Springbank. Um, and a lot of people will be saying, well, that's a good thing, surely. And it absolutely is. It really does have slight spring banky elements to it, but it's got a character of its own because I, I don't think Ard Merkin would we want to be sitting there going, oh, we're just going to make spring bank. That's not what they're trying to do. But there are elements. It's that kind of like rich texture and that oiliness in there and that slight kind of sea saltiness. But there is also a lovely kind of sweetness. Reminds me a little bit of icing sugar, but the, the texture of icing sugar when you've done a little bit of water into slightly runnier than a paste, but not really runny. So it's like drizzling nicely on top of say a cake and it, it solidifies quite quickly. So you get that really silky sweet icing sugar feel to it. Along with a nice kind of, not a dark fruit cake, more like a, a lighter fruit cake that's, you know, got raisins and sultanas, but there is a nice kind of like brown sugar kind of crust on the top with icing sugar over the top of that. The peated element is coming through more towards the finish. It's lifting those flavors. It takes those cakey flavors and takes them in a different direction. You then start to get a slight saltiness. It's almost like salted caramel, maybe like chocolate covered salted caramel. Really, really easy drinking. And if it had an age statement on it, it would basically be five. Um, but we're looking at some slightly older stock in there. But for something so young, there is depth, complexity, texture, quality in here that really belies its age. It's yet another new distillery that is releasing a whiskey at a very young age that is really, really good and bodes incredibly well for the future, but also... Sorry about that. Somebody was trying to get into my shop because they thought I was open and I wasn't. Anyway, so um, hopefully I've managed to uh, get across the point that this is a fantastic young whiskey. Um, there are still people out there that seem to think that whiskey starts at 10 years. Uh, but actually, as a lot of these new distilleries are, are proving, there are new whiskies out there, young whiskies out there that are full of complexity, full of character and texture and interest and, and fun and vigor that, uh, you know, you cannot dismiss anything that doesn't have an age statement on or is younger than a 10 year old. I cannot wait to see what this is like older. I think it's absolutely fantastic. As I said earlier, I think it might be for some people not big enough. It's not in your face enough. There are people out there that want something that's gonna smack you in the chops and oh, this is a new distillery and it's got bags full of flavor. A little bit like the Toravec, it's subtle, it's subdued. It's not trying to yell and scream, hey, look at me. It's, we're making a really good whiskey here. We've got a lot of flavor in there and we don't need to ramp everything up to 11 to prove that we're making good whiskey. I love this. I love the textures in it. I love the sweetness in it. I love that salted caramel. That peated element is not too in your face and it's actually lifting the kind of unpeated sherry bourbon flavors in there. It's doing what I think when you combine peat and uh, not peated barley together, that, element, that smoky element needs to lift flavors rather than be in your face. If you're making a heavily peated whiskey, go for it, go for that style. But if you're using peat to accentuate and complement the other flavors in the whiskey, this is what it should be about. It lifts everything, it makes things more interesting, it really kind of raises the game. It doesn't just turn the volume up to 10 and blast your ears out. It's adding an extra layer of, of uh, an extra dimension of complexity and interest, and I, I really love it because of that. Oh, really good. And 
Bottled, I think, at the perfect ABV. There is enough spice prickle in there, the heat of the alcohol, but I don't think it needs water at all. I think the, the flavors are so subtle and integrated that if you were to add water, it's actually gonna kind of knock that down again. So, you know, they've put it at that ABV in order to get that, that level of complexity and those marriage of flavors pretty much bang on. So I personally would leave it at that. Fantastic whiskey. Really, really good advert for what the distillery can produce. Uh, pretty reasonable price. Uh, it's coming in at forty-seven ninety-nine, I think it was. Um, as I say, you know, by the time you're watching this, it may well have already sold out. But stunning stuff. Um, I cannot wait to see how it develops, and hopefully, I will be getting more of future releases as well. So it is available to purchase if I still have it in stock at the time that you go to the website, www.spiritspecialist.com. Uh, however, I've got plenty of other whiskies on there and other interesting Scots and some other new distilleries as well that are probably worth checking out. So do go and have a look. Uh, UK delivery is available nationwide. Uh, or you can come into the shop um, when I am actually open. Don't start banging on the door while I'm trying to do a video. Uh, and you're more than welcome to try Odds and Sods. And keep an eye out uh, our events page. If you want to join our mailing list, um, that people on that will get advance notice of upcoming tasting events. Uh, the plan is in August to have a new distillery tasting which will feature the likes of Ardnamurk and Torovec, probably some other, maybe Lindor's Abbey if they actually answer the phone. If you're watching, please get in touch because I would like to get some of you in the shop as well. Um, but yeah, keep an eye out for that later on this year. That's going to be really, really interesting too. So events are on all the time whiskey, rum, all sorts of spirits going on. Um, so do join the mailing list and you'll keep updated on that. That's me done. Uh, that was really good. Guys that aren't the Merkham, if you are watching, you're doing a fantastic job, keep it going. And I shall see you at the next video. Cheers.